Hello! Welcome to another Southern New Hampshire University's Learning Center tutorial on how to use Minitab Express. In this video, we'll strictly be talking about how to run the ANOVA test using Minitab Express. So if you haven't actually downloaded Minitab yet, I would recommend doing so. Uh, so that way you're just able to follow along so you can get that program uh, either through the Minitab website or you can download it through the SNHU Blackboard site. Uh, and if you need help with that process, there's a tutorial video within this series that helps explain how you would actually download that through the Blackboard site. So if you need assistance with that, please check out that video uh, and get Minitab installed. So uh, these videos are struck with Minitab Express, so make sure you select those options. Anyway, so back to the video. Uh, this is going to be talking about ANOVA. So once you have Minitab open, you'll be hitting the Statistics tab, and then you'll select One Way ANOVA. Once you've selected this option, you basically are going to tell Minitab uh, more information about the test that you're running so it uh, can apply to your given situation. I've created numbers um, down here in my list, so if you actually have raw data, you'll need to make sure those go into the lists here. Uh, note that ANOVA tests are when you have three or more samples. Uh, I'm just gonna, going to be using three uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So if you actually have the data here, uh, you'll select this option here, this, this drop down menu. This says responses are in one column for all factor levels. Uh, that's not the case right here. I actually put them in a separate column for each because um, I put one into C1, one into C2, and one into C3 here. So I'm going to select that option instead, and then I'm going to just tell it which ones I'm running the uh, variance test on. So I'm going to hit C1, C2, C3, and I'm going to drag them over into the responses text field over here. Uh, additionally, you can collect the, uh, select the Comparisons tab here in the pop-up, and you can select uh, two keys, Compare Group uh, or Fisher, whichever, if your professor is asking for that output. Uh, I'll do two keys because that's pretty uh, popular here at Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, I'll select that. Um, and yeah, other things that you can include here. Uh, you can select Graphs, and I've chosen a Confidence Interval Plot. You can choose Residual Plots, Box Plots, whatever it is that you want outputted, uh, which could totally depend on the problem you're doing or what your professor expects from you when using the Minitab software. Uh, so I'll just select those for the purposes of this tutorial and then you'll hit OK. It's just going to run everything for you right here. So um, here is your p-value for the variance test. It gives you the confidence intervals for each of the samples. Uh, everything is printed out here. So there's a lot of information here, so this could be pretty overwhelming, but just know that a lot of this at the bottom here is outputted because I selected all those extra options for output. So once you've run the test, uh, you can look at this p-value here, uh, and then this is basically all you really need for running the test. You'll then compare that to your significance level alpha and figure out if you reject or fail to reject the null. Uh, the null and alternative are listed right up here. Your null is all means are equal. The alternative is at least when it's different. And that's pretty standard uh, for ANOVA tests for your known alternative. Um, yes, yeah, so then you have this p-value. You compare it to alpha. In this case, I said it was 0.05. Um, that's just the default. But anyway, and you'll be able to finish your test from there. So if you needed to work with the two keys output, uh, which I said is pretty common, you'll look at here, and you'll look at the grouping. So since I just made up this data, they're all pretty similar. Like if you look, I'm just using numbers like four through uh, three through six here. Um, that made them all pretty much similar. So that's why it got grouped into different groups here, or into the same group. So they're all in grouping A. So according to Tukey's test, this means that my three samples are statistically uh, equal. But like let's say I put in like bigger numbers here, and then I ran the test. So let's do that one way ANOVA. Gonna throw all that in here again. So now if you look at the two keys uh, test, oops, I didn't actually tell it to do so. So let me just do that again. Sorry for that. Oh, oh my gosh, I didn't, <laughs> I did it again. Uh, so I'll hit graphs, or comparison, sorry, two key. Okay, so then if we scroll down here, oh, unfortunately they're still all grouped the same, but that's just because I'm making up random data. So if you actually had one that was statistically different, the grouping would change. So like, let's say C2 was actually significantly different here. It'd be put into group B or whatever. So basically any different letter for a group would mean that it's statistically different than other groupings. But uh, yeah, so your professor should go over on how to read the two keys comparison, um, what the grouping means. But 
for purposes of this video, just try and pull away from uh, the idea that this tutorial is just talking about um, how to use Minitab Express. So hopefully that helped you in creating your one-way ANOVA test on Minitab. And uh, just a note, if you want to look at other tests that we've run, you can select the navigator on the side here, and these are all the different ANOVA tests we've run. So if you do end up running the test multiple times, you're able to then navigate through past uh, tests during or from the session of Minitab being opened. So hopefully this video helped in running your ANOVA test in doing a two-keys comparison. Um, please check out any of the other videos if you need any assistance with how to use Minitab Express. And again, like I said, hopefully this video was helpful.